is a CBS News special report. From CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center, here is Dan Rather. And good morning again. High hopes, high blue sky, and some positive developments. For one thing, they've started the clock again after a planned hold. The, it's countdown. Uh, the clock is running. And the hatch has been closed on the Discovery Orbiter. Another sign that they're all ready to fly if, and it remains a pretty big if, if they get the word. Winds up there at 25,000 feet and above or still outside the NASA guidelines for launch. But, and this is the positive sign, just outside the margin now of safety Coming by a percent or two. And uh, the trend on those down. winds may be getting better. The crew members of Discovery have been told to hang in there, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're all strapped down Keep inside the shuttle now, ready to go, counting. if the word uh, comes that the winds will allow it. Uh, Officially, launch uh, time is still an hour behind schedule. The, the official schedule now still at 10.59 a.m., but the indications uh, are that uh, uh, it is unlikely that they would launch as early as 10.59. They could, uh, of course, uh, launch uh, shortly behind that. But the indications are that if they're going to launch today, that it will be sometime, sometime after 10.59 a.m. Eastern Time. The problem so far today has been wind speeds up above 25,000 feet that are too low and from the wrong direction, at least wrong in terms of what the shuttle computers have been programmed to handle. But the latest word is the winds are getting better, so stay tuned. We'll be here to update you as uh, things develop. Dan Rather, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. This special report has been part of CBS News' continuing coverage of the flight of Discovery. This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Discovery. Return to space. From CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center, here is Dan Rather. If they do what they hope to do, the Discovery will be launched about 20 minutes from now. They'll put it up at 11.30. Good morning again, everyone. The winds have shifted in the right direction and the right speed way up high. Those winds now within the margin of safety that NASA needs to try for a launch today. Launch could come at 11.30 Eastern Time. That would be the earliest they would launch, and that's what they're now aiming for. The last launch opportunity today would be uh, shortly before 2 p.m. Eastern Time, more like 1.30 Eastern Time this afternoon. Now, the launch could come sooner or not at all today. This is uh, not a precise business of trying to uh, launch a shuttle, not precise when you're dealing with the kind of winds they've had today, unexpected winds high up there. The winds up around 25,000 feet were too low in speeds and were coming from the opposite direction that NASA was planning for. That's now changed for the better. So the winds up there are compatible with what NASA had programmed in the computers. And the shuttle itself is all ready to go. The crews aboard strapped in and ready to go. This morning, thousands of people lined up all up and down the Florida Space Coast, hoping to see them light up the shuttle and send it up the for the first time in 32 months. Earlier today, the shuttle crew obliged by giving something else not seen here in a long, long time, the NASA astronaut wave. And then the other familiar sight, watching a shuttle crew suit up and get into the shuttle. The shuttle these brave astronauts hope to fly this morning may not look much different than it used to look, but it is different. There have been hundreds of design changes in the shuttle since Challenger exploded, and a change in attitude that can be summed up in two words, safety first. On both scores, new design and new thinking, most of the major changes involve the solid rocket booster that ruptured and destroyed Challenger. A redesigned booster, tested over and over again, is set to launch Discovery. But that's not all. Better, stronger brakes for landing. The shuttle's main engines have been overhauled. The wings are strengthened. And for the first time, an in-flight escape system. The hatch can be blown. The astronauts can slide off a 12-foot pole, clear the shuttle, and parachute down. It only works when the shuttle is gliding. No use should there be a Challenger-type accident during liftoff. The new shuttle program may be improved. The new watchwords may be safety first. But it isn't risk-free. Well, we were just uh, listening uh, to the latest from NASA. Now, here is the situation. They've been hoping to launch 
at a go for launch at 11.30 uh, Eastern Time. But there's been a new development. With us now, Jeff Hoffman, who has flown aboard the space shuttle. Astronaut Jeff Hoffman, still in the program. Jeff, uh, what is the latest, and, and do it, does it look like we're going to go at 11.30, or maybe a little later than that? Well, I'll tell you, I feel for these guys. Uh, I had to hold on the pad at T minus nine minutes while we waited for weather, and we finally went. Uh, I like to feel in my guts that they're going to go. Right now, uh, Bob Crippen is polling the, the mission management team. Um, he's trying to get goes from everybody. Um, so far, everybody has given a go, a minor glitch possibly with an oxygen sensor. I'm, I'm listening now. It sounds like they're sorting that out. Things are looking good. Uh, you mentioned Bob Crippen. This is one of the changes that has been made. Crippen, an, an astronaut, has been assigned the job. It doesn't go unless he says thumbs up. That's correct. He will poll his team. He will then give the launch director the go for launch. Then it's over the launch team. But Bob Crippen's got to give the go before we go. Now, for those of you who may have uh, just joined us or may be confused about what's happening here, everything this morning has gone beautifully except uh, those winds way up there, 25,000 feet or above, which were simply too low and in the wrong direction to be compatible with what NASA had put in to the computers. They've worked the situation down to a, a, a T minus nine minutes. That would be nine minutes to lift off, and they've been holding there. They hope to start counting again, hope to start counting again at 11.21 Eastern Time. That would be about six minutes from now. And if they are able to do that, then we might have a launch as early as 11.30. Watching with thousands of other people outside the Cape is uh, correspondent Peter Van Sant. Uh, Peter, uh, you've been waiting and watching out there for a long time, and I gather that the level of anticipation, tension, and hope is about as high out there as it is here. Oh, it's tremendous. Uh, tremendous anticipation and excitement, and some nervousness. Uh, even veteran shuttle watchers are a bit nervous about this one. Uh, they, they feel as though we're launching into the great unknown. But right now, thousands of people are out here baking in the sun, waiting for Discovery to make its move. Three-year-old Alexander Summer is among the thousands waiting for Discovery to fly. Well, it's gonna be over there. Well, it's gonna be over there. Is it gonna blast off? <laughs> the Discovery launch has turned into a waiting game for the thousands of people who have traveled here from all over the country to witness history. As far as I'm concerned, personally, uh, this pride, and I wish to see the national esteem reestablished. This is really what I've been looking forward to for the past years, and then finally getting it together. It's really awesome. For some, today's possible launch represents a chance to restore some lost confidence in the U.S. space program. Well, it's been like a teeter-totter. I've gone from, from one end of the spectrum and that thinking NASA could ever do any wrong to the other end of the teeter-totter and thinking that they could never do any right. Others will be watching Discovery ride the flame into space with apprehension. The memories of the Challenger disaster still fresh in their minds. Nervous. Up, up and away. Sure, nervous. But we need it, and they're trained for it. And they got to go for it. Everyone here is, is hoping they're going to go for it soon. And as I mentioned, there's going to be some white knuckles out here. A lot of fingers crossed as, as Discovery climbs into space. Uh, everyone is hoping for the best, and uh, we shall see. We are waiting. Thanks, Peter. And waiting is exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're at T minus nine and holding. They hope to start the countdown uh, about, uh, what, five minutes from now. And if they're able to start the countdown, once that clock starts, then they would uh, hope to get a liftoff, to get a launch uh, about 10 minutes after that, which would be at uh, 11.30. So if we start the clock down at 11.21 Eastern Time, as they hope, we'd have the launch at 11.30. Joining me here at our CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center, Bruce Hall, our veteran space watcher. Uh, Bruce, you can feel the anticipation rising here. When, uh, when NASA said, uh, listen, we have a go for launch, which we got, what, about 16, 17 minutes ago, there was a jump in anticipation. One can only imagine uh, what that crew must be thinking. Is it a different kind of crew for this launch? Dan, it certainly is a different kind of crew because this time, for the first time, we have an all-veteran shuttle crew. Five astronauts who've logged more than a thousand hours in space, four military professionals, and an astronomer. The commander is 47-year-old Frederick Houck, known as Rick, a third-generation Navy man. He has been on two shuttle flights, including the first satellite space salvage mission. 42-year-old Richard Dick Covey is the pilot, an Air Force test pilot. He has logged more than 4,000 hours. 
He piloted Discovery on a virtual error-free flight in August 1985. And it was his voice everyone heard giving the final instructions to Challenger crew, go at throttle up. John Mike Lounge, 42-year-old astrophysicist. He is in charge of deploying a communication satellite aboard Discovery. A former Navy aviator, he now flies once a week with the Texas Air National Guard. 38-year-old Marine Lieutenant Colonel Dave Hilmers is a computer genius. He flew on the first flight of Atlantis and will be the flight engineer on this trip. George Pinky Nelson, the youngest member of the crew, the only one who has walked in space. He has a doctorate in astronomy and plays in an all-astronaut rock and roll band called Max Q. So it's a different crew. We've never had one with all shuttle veterans before. No rookies this time. 